Hi everyone. I've been getting a lot of questions about the heel flap that I knit for my socks. So you can see this is a slip stitch heel and it's got a garter edge along the heel flap. In this, uh, in this sock here, this is a, a colorway called Angry Birds. It's a self-striping sock yarn from Turtle Pearl Yarns. And you'll see that it has a contrasting heel flap and heel turn. So this yellow is the entire heel section. So this is a regular slip stitch heel. And then along the edge, I have a three stitch garter border. It's the same on the other side. So the first question I get is why do I do this? And the reason I do, if you've knit a traditional heel flap and gusset, a lot of them have this slip stitch pattern and the patterns will recommend that you slip the last stitch or the first stitch on each row so that you get a nice big V, which makes it easy to pick up the stitches when you pick up the stitches along the heel flap and start knitting your gusset in the round again. This is different because instead of having that nice big V, that big stitch to pick up, you're picking up a little garter bump along the edge. And the reason I like that is it makes a nice clean connection between your heel flap and your gusset. What I found with the slip stitch on the edge of the row is that you get, you get a big gap. So if I pull this fabric apart, you can see that this connection isn't moving at all. It's a nice clean seam. I can even pull it up closer. You can see it, it just looks really nice and finished. I also like the extra texture that this gives. So this is now my go-to heel. I do go back and forth. Sometimes I do a slip stitch pattern. Sometimes I do eye of partridge, which just alternates the knit and the slip stitches every right side row. But the, the edge border with the garter is the same on both sides. So uh, the other question I've been getting is how I close up the little hole that can sometimes form where the corner of your heel flap and your gusset come together with your instep. And I, I have a way that I like to close that stitch together so that it looks nice and finished. And I'm gonna show both of those to you today. So let's jump into it. This is a sock that I'm knitting out of another self-striping sock yarn by Woolens and Nosh. This is in her Targi base and the colorway is called Swizzle. This, by the way, is a very plump fingering weight yarn and I'm knitting it on a two millimeter US zero. So you'll have to bear with me a little bit. It's making a pretty nice dense fabric, but that will make it just a little bit uh, harder for me to pick up the stitches just because it is such a tight gauge. So when I knit a contrasting heel flap, I leave my working yarn connected. I finished my heel flap and my gusset, or I'm sorry, my heel flap and my heel turn. So you can see that those are done here. And you'll see along the edge on both sides, I have this three stitch garter border. Now, because I've knit a contrasting heel flap, I've broken my working yarn up here. I ended my heel turn right here and I've broken my working yarn. I'm going to pick up and start knitting with my main yarn again. But this technique is exactly the same if you're not using a contrasting yarn and you finished your heel turn, your working yarn will just be up here. You'll pick up this side of your heel flap stitches before you move around. I'm just starting in a different place, but the technique is the same no matter what. So let's jump into it. The first thing I'm going to do is connect my instep. I'm gonna go back across so I can pick up the heel flap stitches on what would be my left. So I'm going to knit those stitches right now and we'll just knit across the row. This works fine if you're in stockinette, if you're knitting a pattern, you would just knit the pattern across the instep and everything would be exactly the same. You'll notice today that I'm knitting on magic loop. That's how I prefer to do all of my socks. Again, the technique is the same if you are using double point needles. So I think it would be really easy to do with DPNs. I don't actually knit socks on nine inch circulars and I have no idea how you would do any of this on nine inch circulars. I'm assuming that people probably either have to use DPNs or magic loop if you're going to use a heel flap and gusset. I think uh, otherwise you'd just be left to do like an afterthought heel or something like that. So let's just work across the row and we will get ready to start. The other thing I like about magic loop here, I'm using a, oh gosh, and I'm all tangled. I am using a 40 inch cable, which I really like because it gives you plenty of flexibility. Uh, there's plenty of room to work when you go to do this. So we've knit across the instep and we're ready to pick up the stitches for the gusset. But the first thing I'm going to do is close this corner stitch. So you can see here, 
uh, will have one row difference between where my working yarn is and where my heel flap is because I was knitting across uh, only on the back side of the sock. So what I like to do is go one stitch below what's on the needle, or I, I look at where the first horizontal bar is. So hopefully you're able to see that there's that horizontal bar between stitches. What I like to do is pick up the left leg of the right hand stitch and the right leg of the left hand stitch that are in line with that horizontal bar. So I just pick that one up and pick that one up and you can see I've now picked up half of each one of those stitches and I'm gonna knit those two together as if they were a stitch. And that's how I'm going to start picking up my stitches and that will close that hole really nicely. So again, you're gonna pick up the left leg of the right hand stitch and the right leg of the left hand stitch where that horizontal bar goes across and then you're ready to get started. So now we're ready to pick up the stitches on our gusset, our heel flap for our gusset. So you'll notice at the end, hopefully you can see this, on the end of each row, there's the little, uh, the smile and the umbrella of the edge stitch. And what I do is go in and pick up whichever one is easier to pick up. It doesn't actually matter. You can pick up the little smile, you can pick up the umbrella. I think on this side, I'm gonna pick up the umbrella or the outermost little bump, and you're just gonna insert your needle and pick up that stitch. If you find it easier, let's see. If you find it easier to use your other needle or you're finding it difficult to pick up those stitches, you can absolutely use either a, another needle that you have on hand if you're doing magic loop like I am and you've got your needle ready to go right here, you can do that as well. And, and what you would do is just insert your needle into that stitch. You can slip your other needle in there and then you're essentially just knitting that stitch uh, together. So if that's a little bit easier for you, that works really well also. I go back and forth. It depends on how much light I have. It depends on how tight the stitch is, uh, what color the yarn is. Those are real problems as you get older. I'm including myself in that comment, by the way. So you're just gonna go along and pick up each one of these stitches along the heel flap until you have however many your pattern calls for. Now remember, I picked up that extra stitch at the bottom in the corner. I don't worry about that when I'm doing my gusset decreases. So in this sock, I'm knitting a 72 stitch sock on a US zero, that's a two millimeter needle. And so I have 18 stitches to pick up along my heel flap. And with the one in the corner that I've already picked up, that gives me 19. I don't worry about that at all. I just uh, I just consider that I have 19 stitches on each side and as long as it's even, I don't worry about that. I don't do a double decrease in the first row or anything to get rid of it. I don't find that it causes any problems with the fit. If you do, if you try this and you feel like that one extra stitch changes your fit a little bit and you don't like it, you could just do uh, two decrease rounds in a row or you could decrease two stitches in your first decrease round instead of one. All right, so if I've done this right, let's look and see. I should have 19 stitches on the needle. So I've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 19. So I've got the right number of stitches. I've closed up that corner, and now I'm ready to work across my heel turn. So I'm going to rearrange here. This is the, the part of Magic Loop or the part of Socks that gets a little bit tricky. Uh, you just end up with a lot of stitches on the needle, but that's okay. So I'm going to knit across my heel turn now. And then we'll be ready to pick up the other side of the heel flap. I'd love to see a comment below if you have a different method that you prefer for picking up your stitches or if you have a favorite go-to method. I've knit a lot of socks. They're probably my most favorite thing to knit. They're my go-to when I don't know what else to do. 
and I've just really found that I like I like the fit of a heel flap and gusset. I really like the look of it. I love self-striping yarn. I love to do contrasting heels and toes. And so aesthetically, I like it. I really like the fit, but I'm always trying different things out. I know some people really like the, the tube sock with the afterthought heel. So leave a comment if you like to do something different with your socks. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do, I should have had this ready to go. I like to use a little stitch marker here. I'm terrible at keeping track in my pattern of how many stitches I have in my heel turn. I just follow the pattern to make sure I decrease everything. So I like to put in a little stitch marker right here, just a removable one. Uh, even a closed ring would work just fine because you can take it off when you knit back around the next time. But I use this as my reference point to know how many stitches I have picked up. Otherwise, sometimes it's difficult to tell where the last stitch in your heel turn was and where the first stitch in your heel flap is that you're picking up because you know we're in the round at this point. So I'm going to do the exact same thing on this side. I'm just going to pick up a stitch in each one of these 18 bumps of garter on the edge and then we'll pick up our 19th stitch here in the corner to close that gap just like we did on the other side. Now I find the second side if you're doing magic loop just gets a little bit trickier because you have a lot of stitches on your needle. Again if you're working on DPNs I'm sure you have a, a really nice way to get around that you know, by being able to separate everything out. But we're gonna do the exact same thing here. So again, uh, we're gonna pick up into the garter bump at the end of each row. You can go into uh, the stitch that looks like a smile. You can go into the stitch that looks like an umbrella. Uh, sometimes I get one on one row and I get a different one on the next stitch just because that's what I can see in the moment. And I just go with it. I always say if people are inspecting your knitting that closely and they're gonna point it out as a comment, those people are not your friends. Unless maybe you're uh, working towards master knitter and you're asking somebody to inspect your work on that level. I, uh, I don't sweat the small stuff like that, which is funny because I'm actually a fairly, uh, fairly detail-oriented person. So I'm going to keep going along here. Again, once you get a lot of stitches, I find that it is easier to, to use your left hand needle to give you a little bit of leverage in here. So we're just gonna go into that bump, wherever you can get it, oops, wherever you can get it is fine. We'll go into the bump up the stitch. I do actually like to do this fairly snug. This is another thing I like better about the garter border. When you're doing this with a slip stitch edge, I feel like pulling a little bit tighter actually creates an even bigger gap when you've got just that slip stitch because it is so loose. And so it, it perpetuates the problem, makes that little gap in there even bigger. And I find that with this garter bump, because you're just really picking up one yarn, you know, you're not even picking up two legs of a stitch or something, that it, it really holds its shape really nicely. You don't end up with a gap in there. And I really like the finished look that it gives. So we're gonna count. This is where the stitch marker comes in really handy. Uh, I've not been counting along the way because I've been talking. So let's look and see how many we've got. We've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17. Yep, we're right on. So this last one is a little bit different because I was using a contrasting yarn. You can see this coral color yarn up here makes up half the stitch. And then I'm going to go into that little white bump. And again, I'm, I'm at the end. I've got all of my gusset stitches on one side plus now two heel, well, I've got all the gusset stitches on both sides of that heel flap, plus I've got my heel turn all on one needle. So it's just a little bit hairy uh, to get in there, but we'll go right into there. And now we've got the 18 stitches from our heel flap. And the last thing we're going to do is pick up the stitch in the corner. So I'm gonna look for that horizontal bar. I'm going to pick up, so the bar's right here. I'm going to pick up the 
left leg of the right stitch and the right leg of the left stitch. There we go. It's a little bit hard to see in here with that white yarn, but I've got those. I'm gonna knit those two together and pull my working yarn through. And now I have all of my stitches. Uh, it's a little bit of a mess, but let me pull my needle through. Now I've got all of my gusset stitches. Oh, you can't see that because it's not in the camera. I've got my gusset or heel flap stitches on both sides. I've got my heel turn and I've got both holes closed up in the middle and we are ready to go. So give this a try. Let me know what you think. If you do have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out and happy sock knitting guys.